In this video, we'll look at a challenge that we face in Annex Cam when we have a part we're machining on multiple machine tools and we want to do simulation. We can only have one simulation machine in, in, in each NX file, which means we're going to have multiple files. We can pass the IPW from one to the other, but what happens when there's an update of the customer part? We don't want to have to update each of those NX files separately. We'd like the update to occur automatically. So this is a workflow that demonstrates that. The video is in three parts. First, we're going to create a component file that has our customer part in it. In part two, we'll do some turning using that component file. And in part three, we'll do some milling, uh, also associating to that first file. So let's begin. Here is our customer part file. I've already saved it. There's just no geometry in it right now, so let's import the customer geometry. It's going to be a step file, and we'll start with our Rev A part. Okay, there's our, our part geometry. We'll just save the file, and we're on to step two. Let's begin our turning now. We'll look at the Manufacturing tab here in the File New dialog. Of course, we're going to reference an existing part, and that will be the customer part that we just created moments ago. Now, I will change this name to make it a little easier to follow. This is our turning part file. Okay, now, before I go any further with this though, I do want to wavelength this in. If I look at my assembly tab, this is a component. I want to wavelength so that I'm actually doing my machining off of local geometry that we want to see here in our part navigator. So let's uh, move this body to layer 20 for a little housekeeping here. And now let's turn layer 20 back on. That's our, our customer part. Now we'll go to the assembly tab. And wavelength this body. Okay, so here's our, our linked body. And I'm going to rename this. To, so it's easier to keep track of. Uh, let's go back to the layers. And we'll hide layer 20. So what we're seeing here on the screen is only our linked body at this time. We need to create some stock. I'll switch back to modeling. And let's make a cylinder. Okay, this is going back four inches and twenty thousandths back off the front, so we have a little facing stock. I'll rename this one also. This is our blank. Let's return to manufacturing. And we'll attach the machine tool at this time. Oh, be before I start, uh, th this template does bring in a couple of tools which we don't need. And the machine we want is SIM. And I'm going to shift my part mount junction back six inches to the mount point of the machine. Now let's retrieve a chuck. And 
Now the chuck is here. Uh, the jaws are not. I believe that's a layer problem. Yeah, there's our jaws. Okay. Next I want to go to the geometry view and to speed things up I've created a template that should create most of what we need here as this is more of a workflow video not so much a demonstration of creating all the operations and everything. So let's go uh, get our own geometry from that template file. And here it is. Okay, this creates a uh, workpiece, turning workpiece, and some operations. Let's begin by filling out the part in the blank. That will create the turning workpiece if I click on it. You see that created there. And let's just go ahead and generate the operations. There's our facing, our first turning, and I'm back turning with our grooving tool. Here's center line drilling, and finally it's parting off. Okay, we want to go back now and look though at the machine tool quickly. So it did bring in uh, tool holders for us. You can see if I switch this from one pocket to another it changes position here. And I'll make that a little easier to display to see by changing the display of those datums and hiding those. Okay, so there's our, our three tools. Let's now do a, a quick simulation. Sorry, I'm going to restart that. But turn on the 3D material removal. Okay. Alright. There's our, our part. You can see it does appear to match the solid model pretty well, so I think we're ready to continue. Here's what we need to do. We're going to go to the part off operation, that's our last operation, and under verify 3D dynamic, there's a couple of possibilities here. When I go to IPW, uh, if this was a, our last operation was a milling operation, we would just choose save. That would save the IPW, and then in our next CAM setup, we would map the IPW from this point. Because this is turning, our IPW work has been 2D, and we can't really do that. So what we're, we'll do, because this is turning, is we'll save as component, uh, suppress animation, and I'll just say forward to next operation. And once again, there it displays that um, IPW on the screen, and that's now created a component that we can use later. So two different techniques here depending on whether this is turning or milling and in our next file you'll see that there will be two techniques for grabbing that IPW depending on what we started with here so that'll be part three of the video let's continue with our second simulation machine we're going to finish the part with some milling In the Manufacturing tab, we'll choose Reference Existing Part. General Setup is fine. The part to reference is the uh, 
the one we selected originally, our customer part. So this part of the workflow follows exactly as the lays did. I'm going to move this to uh, layer 20. And uh, sorry, before I turn that off, of course, I need to do the, the wavelength. Okay, now let's turn that layer off. So what we're looking at on the screen is the linked body only. Here's our component to the customer part, but it is currently hidden. Now, uh, remember I mentioned that there are two workflows depending on whether you're starting with a turning part or a milling part. Let's at least talk about what we would do if the first operation was also a milling operation. Here we'd go to specify blank and we would then choose IPW select source and instead of work part we would browse and we would have browsed for our um, the turning part that we had just created. Let's see, it would have been... Oh. This guy right here. But of course, if, if I look in there, there is nothing for me. Uh, I can see the operations, but none of them have active, solid IPWs that I can grab. That would have worked, though, if that it, those had been milling operations. Okay, so what am I going to do? Remember that at the conclusion of our turning, we saved a component for the IPW. So I'll go back to Assemblies, Add, and now I want to find the part off. Here it is. I'll choose Absolute Origin because I want it to come in exactly where the other one was, that our, our part is, so it overlays. Then I can go to workpiece and choose specify part. And specify blank. Okay, let's go uh, bring our machine tool in. Now, uh, if this were a more realistic workflow, I'd be coming up with some kind of fixturing. But just because we are showing the workflow, I'm going to let this part float in the air above the rotary table on SIM 8. Let's change our orientation a little. And drop it below. And select our part. Okay, there we are looking at the table. Uh, we've got uh, our pockets came in with the machine tool, of course. So let's go to the geometry view. And once again, I'm going to delete here and uh, find some geometry that I already created in a template file. Okay. 
and let's just orient our uh, G53. Here's our G54. And I, I made a mistake there. I've got to redo the workpiece. And here's our blank. Okay, we'll double check our tools here. They were brought in, but they were not placed in pockets. Now, we'll have to map geometry because the template knew nothing about the, the geometry selection. So, um, here I need to select a floor, and it's going to be this face. Here's the second face. Next I switch to a 3 8 end mill and I'm cutting these grooves. The last two operations are cutting these counterbores here. Okay, let's hide this thing. through the part. There it is. Alright, I've made my selections. Let's uh, generate. So it's uh, face milling with a 2 inch face mill. There's one counterbore, there's the other. So I'm not going to worry about uh, the little hole there. Alright, uh, now we're going to um, simulate. Uh, you can't see it down here, but I'm on uh, machine code simulation. I'm going to load some settings. And let's let it. Uh, create the uh, 3D material removal. Okay, so it's generated that stock for us. And I'll kind of speed through this. Okay, so there's our, our completed part. Uh, again, we just uh, did the two large faces, the grooves, and then came back and did the counterbore. I did not machine the holes. So I said there were three parts to the video, but there's really a fourth part. We need to go back and change the original customer model to Rev B. Then go through the other two files, the turning file and the milling file that you see here, and make sure that our workflow is actually reliable and valid. So let's close this file. And go back to the beginning.
Okay, I'm going to uh, import the uh, step file for Rev B from the, from the customer. Uh, we can kind of see what the, the differences are. The, there are two differences. The counterbore has gotten much larger, and the shoulder on the back has gotten smaller. Okay, so um, what we want to do, though, is not just pass this new body along to the other operations. What we want to do is map the internal identifiers that were already there in body 2 to body 3, so that uh, we don't have to re-pick any geometry downstream. So here's how I'm going to do that. Uh, this is the original body, body 2. I'm going to, um, I'm sorry, first switch to modeling. So I have all my options here. And I'm going to right click, convert to linked body. And next, uh, this is an easy step to forget, it's very important, but I need to drag and drop this body so it uh, actually occurs before the linked body. Okay, now I'm going to left double click on the linked body and I'm going to say, look, uh, my I want to link in from my work part this other body here. If I click OK right now, it will work, but I will skip this very important step, the replacement assistant, and this is what allows me to map faces from the new body to the old body so that everything is associated downstream. So it's very important at this point that I hit Replacement Assistant. And I have a couple of boxes that I always check in here. Uh, I synchronize the views and I emphasize unmatched objects. In general, when we have a revision from a customer, there's going to be ch faces that don't change at all. And so we can use a geometric matching and locate those very quickly. So here we can see the faces that uh, did not change. And before I continue, you can see the little lightning bolt. This is a, a match, but it's uh, has not been accepted yet. So I'm going to right click and accept all of these matches. Okay, now I can see where it's going to have some trouble. Uh, it's in the areas where things have changed. So I can help this along if I click here and say add new match. And I want to match here and here. And I'm going to use the uh, middle button on my mouse to accept those matches. So it's left click, left click, center click. So I can quickly go through and find things that I know are matches. Okay, at this point, I can use infer from accepted. In other words, it's going to look at what's already been accepted and see if it can make an inference to some of the other faces. So let's hit the binoculars here and in fact it did find edges and faces that are matched so let's accept those uh, now that I've got some more matches let's just hit it again so it says all objects are matched uh, but some are not accepted so let's see if I can actually I think I might be done here I think about everything matched up between the two. And in fact, that's uh, the little message down here was telling me that everything was matched. All right, now let's click OK. Click OK again. And I've now matched my new geometry into the old body so that it will associate to everything downstream. Very important then, let's save the file and close it before we continue. 
Okay, next we want to open our uh, turning file, which is this guy. As we do a visual inspection, uh, it looks correct so far. Uh, we see the, the larger counterbore, that was one of the changes, and we see the smaller shoulder on the back, that was also one of the changes. But before we continue, uh, let's make sure everything's up to date. Uh, if I go back to the workpiece, I see everything did map. But I'm interested in knowing, you know, uh, did the uh, turning workpiece update? So I click on that again, and it looks like it did. Uh, let's t try and generate the facing. That looks good so far. Uh, that looks like that could work. Uh, but it's really the back turning, right, where, where we're going to see a difference because right now it's uh, way up here and I want to see if it updates correctly and it does uh, it finds that uh, th the change in the turning work piece and it updates correctly and now I, I saw our um, parting off jump down a little bit so it also sees that smaller stock condition okay so this looks great um, however I need to go to verification, 3D dynamic, and under IPW, uh, I need to save as component. Um, the the reason is I want to update that component so that the correct uh, blank geometry will be passed to the milling operation. Okay. Now I'll save and close this file. Okay, before we open that milling file, there's one more thing we need to do, and this only occurs if that first component is a lathe uh, operation. So let's open the uh, the IPW file from the part off. That's the one we've been passing back and back to the mill. As we open this, you see that there are two revolves now. If what happened is when we updated it, uh, it did not update the revolve feature, it just added another. So here's our first revolve, our first IPW, and here you can kind of see uh, in the outline that the updated smaller IPW with the smaller shoulder. Okay, so how are we going to fix this? Uh, it's really pretty easy because we don't have to actually map faces on the IPW, we just need the solid to be present there. So um, I'll switch to modeling, replace, and here's the replacement feature, it's this one, just click OK. And you see now there's only one revolve and it's with the smaller shoulder. Okay, let's save that file. And finally, I want to open the milling file. Uh, I see everything's out of date here, so let's just go ahead and regenerate and then have a look. Okay, so that's a good sign. It looks like it's uh, mapping to at least uh, some of the faces here. Let's just let it go through this. We'll verify that it did map to the faces and that our IPW did update. So that's correct. Uh, I can't really see the back, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Uh, here it's picking up all these floors. That's the correct mapping. Uh, it does see the uh, larger counterbore, and it's machining it correctly, and also back here. Uh, but what about that uh, IPW? Let's go to the workpiece. And in fact, I see it does have the smaller shoulder. So that's the, c that's the correct in-process workpiece being sent across from the turning operation. So I'm not going to take the time to simulate this because really what we were after is, uh, is it a valid workflow? Did it uh, automatically update uh, our wavelength model from the single component? And it did. Uh, that single component uh, was automatically mapped into the turning file and then our sim 08 milling file. 
So that's a, a workflow then for multiple simulation machines uh, with updates uh, using NXCAM.